Hi everyone, I wanted to post a short video about uh, the magazines of uh, Atlas Seaboard. Uh, most of you know Atlas was formed in uh, the mid-70s, 1975. Martin Goodman sold Marvel Comics and uh, wanted to create and go head on. I think there was some bad blood there. wanted to go in and tackle Marvel head on the marketplace. So he went about uh, trying to recreate Marvel. He uh, set his son, uh, Chip Goodman, set to run the company. Chip Goodman, in turn, his publisher, hired uh, Larry Lieber, Stan Lee's younger brother, to actually run the company as editor-in-chief. So they were definitely going for the Marvel vibe. Um, there's a couple dozen titles, Atlas titles, that are out there, uh, varying quality. I, they're fun to collect, fun to read, um, kind of directionless. Uh, pretty violent for the time, really. But uh, I don't want to talk about those. Uh, I want to talk about their magazines. Uh, back then, of course, if uh, they said Atlas was going to jump in uh, head first into the publishing uh, fight, and they were going up against Warren and Marvel, so they had to have a monster magazine. So Movie Monsters was uh, their effort. Back then, you know. Of course, Warren hit famous monsters, and Marvel at the time was publishing monsters of the movies. So, Movie Monsters was uh, Atlas's effort. The editor here is Jeff Rovin. Rovin uh, is, has plenty of bylines in the fan press from the 70s, 80s, 90s, and the present day. Uh, I think he's written like an encyclopedia of monsters, an encyclopedia of superheroes. Uh, if you collect magazines or in comics or you know, any kind of fandom magazines, you've run across his name quite a bit. He's a pretty prolific guy. Uh, anyway, this is issue one of Movie Monsters. Uh, I only bought one of these off the rack. Uh, issue one here has a, a Cyclops cover. Uh, the only issue I bought was four. That's the first issue I found, which was the last issue. This was the summer of 75, so I opened seven years old. Uh, Sub Voyage of Sinbad had recently played in the drive-in at the time uh, to capitalize on the success of uh, Golden Voyage of Sinbad which came out the year before. And Seven Voyage made me an, uh, a movie fan, a comic book fan, everything. I, that movie changed my life. And the Cyclops was my all-time favorite movie monster. So uh, this cover haunted me from the back issue page. You know, I, I wasn't able to find it until you know I was in my 20s when I started hunting these things down. But uh, here's issue one, and here's issue two. A nice uh, Dr. Zayas cover. His coverage of Doc Savage, which would have been in the theaters at the time. That's actually issue four. Let's go to issue three. Issue three is rather crude cover of the Phantom. I'm not sure who the artist was here. It's not a great cover. <laughs> and then issue four here is the final issue of the run. And this was the this was the issue I bought off the rack. This is the only Atlas magazine uh, I ever found as a kid. I bought a few of the comics, like Planet of the Vampires and uh, Tiger Man and Son of Dracula. The comic books I found at my, you know, corner market, um, but the magazines were hard to find. So this is the only issue I, I found, and uh, there were no more. So, that's Movie Monsters. They also published, of course, comic magazines. Here is Weird Tales of the Macabre. This uh, horror comics in the creepy or eerie vein. A nice Jeff Jones cover. These stories are actually pretty good. Uh, they had Top Flight's artist at the time. I think there's some work in, these, in this title by uh, Russ Heath and Alex Toth and uh, Walt Simonson. They're definitely worth hunting down and pretty cheap, really. These things are, are not very expensive. And uh, the first issues of these titles are easy to find. Issue twos, this is issue two of Weird Tales of the Macabre, and this is the final issue. Uh, the second issue of these titles are a little scarcer. They're really not really expensive, but they're hard to track down. That's issue two, and that is the, the final issue of Weird Tales. Now, they also had Devilina. Devilina, of course, is uh, a riff on uh, Warren's much more popular Vampirella. Uh, here he had horror stories and then a continuing feature with the scantily clad sorceress. Again, uh, not bad work you know, for the time. 
That's issue one, uh, issue two. And this is, let's say, issue two is kind of scarce, a little harder to find. Yeah, it might cost you a few bucks when you do find one. Uh, the next issue was a straight adventure book, Thrilling Adventure Stories. Here's a nice, uh, it's nice work here by Howard Shakin, isn't it? Uh, second issue has like Russ Heath. Um, pretty good work. I said it's a fun magazine. Issue one you can find anywhere. I said I paid three bucks for this. I mean, you can find this anywhere on eBay. Issue two, the final issue, is much harder to find. This has a nice Neil Adams cover. Uh, this one cost me quite a bit more. Um, so this one's scarce if you see it. It's definitely worth picking up. Uh, these are very fun magazines. Uh, they had one other title, as far as I know. Uh, one other magazine title. Uh, it was advertised in their house ads, Gothic Romances. It's advertised as a uh, text magazine with spot illustrations. I have yet to find one. Uh, I do a search on eBay every once in a while, but you type in Gothic Romances, I mean, you know, thousands of titles come up. So uh, I don't, like I said, I don't think it's an actual comic magazine, an actual text magazine, so I would like to, you know, if I find it, I'd certainly pick it up. As far as I know, there's only been the one issue, but uh, I've yet to see it. So anyway, these are uh, for magazine and comic collectors of the 70s, the Bronze Age. These are definitely worth your attention. There's some really good work in here. So uh, anyway, thanks for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.